really an indication of how far this Alabama team has come under Nate Oates. Most prolific three-point shooting team in the country. Alabama raining down the threes. You got to credit this Alabama defense. They get back, they grind, they're right up in you. Six triples in the first four minutes. Green Equipment brings you the Nate O Show. Welcome once again, everybody. I'm Chris Stewart alongside the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Coach, unfortunately, one loss, one win, but the win's most recent in our minds. So I look forward to talking to you about that one, but not a bad week overall for your squad. No, I mean, we didn't shoot it well against Kentucky, but we played well. Our defense was definitely good enough to win us that game. We just had a bad shooting performance, and, you know, we came out the next night against Ole Miss and shot it more like what we're capable of. Hopefully that'll get us going a little bit shooting-wise. We've struggled to shoot a little bit, but you know, if we can get the defense of Kentucky and the offense of the Ole Miss game together, we might be a top five team in the country. But you know, we're, we're, we're getting better. We just got, we got to put both sides of the ball together for a full game, but I, I was happy with the performance at Ole Miss. It's been a while since we had a road win. Sure, and no exaggeration to what you said because you have beaten top five teams on multiple occasions this year. Coach, let's get into the highlights, though, from the matchup. Charles Bediaco was big for you in this game against the Cats. Yeah, he was our only guy scoring double figures. He's two shots so far. He got some stuff done at the rim. I thought he did a really good job on she Blazers. Up for conference player of the year. She's up for national player of the year. And I thought Charles did a great job with him. So you can see him finishing, finishing up the rim well. He had eight, eight rebounds to go with his 12 points. So, you know, I thought and, and caused uh, their bigs fits inside. You know, their bigs weren't able to score very well on him. So happy with his effort for sure. A lot of basketball to be played in this year, but it's hard not to be excited about what the future holds for Charles. Yeah, I mean, if we can put on 15, 20 pounds on him over the summer and just get him a lot stronger. Now he's accustomed to the physicality of, you know, what SEC play looks like. And I think he's got a big, big upside. He's starting to play. He's making his free throws. He's playing really well. His defense was contagious. Keon Ellis getting a block. And Coach, you talked about it. That's That was the, really the theme and definitely a positive to take away from no, that game. No, we played hard. I mean, we started out 9-1. We just couldn't make a shot. I mean, it's hard to win games going 3 or 30 from 3. But, you know, between Keon, you know, obviously Charles played well. We talked about it. Guys on the floor, I thought Rojas also, you know, Juwan got back to doing what Juwan does. So it was good to see defensively just as one of our poor offensive performances since we've been here. Would have been great to see what would have happened if just three or four more shots had fallen in the first half. It seemed that late your team got frustrated by the lack of success. Yeah, there. I think they did. That was one, the one thing I was disappointed with. I thought our, our lack of shot making affected our effort as the game went on. I thought we had great effort for the first three-fourths of the game, and then we just got a little frustrated with ball not dropping, which is, you know, natural as humans do, but you, you can't do that. You got to discipline yourself. You got to be a little bit more mentally tough to just play through a poor shooting performance or any kind of adversity, to be honest with you. The referees calls, turnovers, missed shots. You just got to, you got to play through it. And I thought, thought we were better with that. I mean, we got down 11 to start out the old Miss game and we showed some mental toughness and fought through a little adversity and got, got ourselves rolling that game. A lot more fun to talk about those highlights. And we'll do that next right here on the Nate Oates Show. Coach kind of wondered what you might get out of your squad after a tough loss, and you lost a couple in a row. You're going to go back and play an Ole Miss team that, for a change, was not a top five opponent when you faced them. Yeah, first first game in four games that we didn't have a top five opponent, but I mean, they're still a quality team, and they they're one of the better defensive teams in in the league on on a lot of nights. So. You know, we, it was not a defensive struggle that game either. Either side, I thought our defense wasn't great. Uh, theirs was worse. You know, our offensive shooting really helped. So I thought we showed some mental toughness. Though I thought we showed that we've got, you know, we we can fight through some adversity. We get down 11 out of the gate. They're, they made some tough shots. I mean, they, you know, we we needed to be better on defense, but they made some tough shots. Their three-point shooting out of out of the gate was great, and then our guys fought back and. 
you went from down 11 in the first half to up 11 by the half and then, you know, kind of hung on in the second half, opened up a bigger lead. So it's good to see Shackelford get going again. I mean, yeah. he's been, I think he's been playing really well for a little bit over a month now. You know, he just had the, the one bad shooting night against Kentucky when he wasn't feeling the best, but he, he shot it really well. J.D. got back playing well again. You know, Quinterly had eight assists. J.D. had eight assists. I mean, it was a good night for both those guys. All those things you talked about, we're going to see in the highlights, and we do start with Jaden Shackelford. Finally, finally got him above 28, a new career high as he hits 30. That's right. He one. hit 28 a few times, hadn't he? <laughs> sure, if he'd have made some free throws, he'd have matched, uh, <laughs> matched Joyner for 33. That's he, right. But, no, he was, he was on fire from three, I and mean, uh, his shot looked good, too. They weren't hitting anything but net, so finished well in transition. I thought he was good on defense for us as well, and it's kind of funny how it works. You get locked in on the defense, then your offense kind of follows. He shot it better individually from three than your team collectively had in a while. Eight of 13, that'll get you That'll get you a lot of Ws. Yeah, to make eight, eight of them is big, you know, eight, and then a lot of other guys shot it well too. JD went two for two, Noah Gurley went two for three. I think Keon was one for one. It was Quinterly was one for two. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of guys that shot 50% or higher from three. Quietly, I thought 18 points for JD, but the eight assists were huge. No, they were. And he, you know, he only missed one shot. He's seven of eight from the field. That's a, that's a big night. I thought Noel was really good for us defensively. And Coach, you referenced that 11 point deficit you had. I thought his energy, even though his stats weren't huge, helped kind of spark the turnaround no, in that first half. He won a, Hard hat award, the blue collar, you know, he's on the floor for loose balls, getting rebound tip outs, getting offensive rebounds, giving us second chances. He he played well. I was happy for him. He's he really wants to play well. He's really concerned with how much time he puts he puts in a ton of time, so he deserved to play well. I was happy for him. Ball going through the net seems to make life better, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Everything gets a lot easier when you're playing with a lead and when the ball's going through. I mean, Noah shot it well. Obviously, we've talked about Shaq, but Keon and JD went two for two. So I think that's a little contagious, too. The ball starts moving. You start pulling for your teammates to do well. And you end up having a great offensive performance there. And that, that building's been good to us. I think we're averaging 100 in the two games we played in that building. So we'll get a building that looks somewhat similar like that uh, here in Tuscaloosa. Swipe the blueprints and just turn the seats from navy to crimson and we're in good shape, right? Yeah, we're going to make it a little bit bigger than theirs from what that, they tell me. That sounds good. Let's take a look at some more of those highlights as the tide rolled on the road. Let's get back to us tonight, all right? Don't stop believing in each other. Let's fly from deep bottom and that is a good start. So tonight hold each other accountable, all right? Play hard, be like Alabama. I need energy out the gate. We're going on a run out the gate. Straight stops and straight buckets. Tough time. Come on. Welcome, everybody, to the Pavilion at Ole Miss tonight. Crimson Tide of Alabama. We'll try to get back in the win column. Harden Quinterly right down the center of the lane and lays it in. Finds Keon driving to the rack. Reverse layup is good. AD throwing a lob at Jawan Gary throwing it home. Deep three, bottom to shoot it. He's going to make it. He's got five in Alabama. With the tight steals it. Here's Shaq driving, leg it up, count it, and he is fouled. He does anyway. He makes it again as Alabama is red, smoking hot. Porter Shaq, three ball. Oh. Good night. Oh, oh, oh. Nice speed. Rojas in the lane, lays it up, count it, and he's fouled. A chance for the end one. Two on one to the rim. It is good. He is fouled, and another and one opportunity ahead to JD. The line, Maniaco, and the flush. Gurley left the circle. Three bottom, and boys, he's been big tonight. So this segment every week that Aaron Hep puts together is a lot more fun when we're coming off of a win. It's true. And we get a chance to do this now. Let's just see what we got. I miss dress rehearsal. Let's, let's see what we got. Uh, this is among your players. You're supposed to guess who had a summer job where he had to clean the dorms. Uh, is this walk-on to scholarship? Everybody's available? Uh, everybody's on the table, Coach. Man, who, uh, Adam Cottrell, maybe? I, don't, I have no idea. 
Uh, Noah, Noah Carl Erling. Oh, maybe at Furman. That, yeah. that definitely wasn't here. That, <laughs> That's that makes right. makes sense, yeah. Okay, before I got there. Unanimously voted by teammates as the player who takes the most selfies. Ooh. Is that Cottrell? No, there's no okay. way. All right. J just, okay. JD? J.D. Davis. There's? Oh, just saw him. Okay. You know, Played a yeah, big game, yeah, by the yeah. way. Big game the Most other night. Good. All right. Senior in high school. This player averaged 34 a game. Shaq was higher than that. So uh, who, who would average 34 as a senior in high school? It's got J.D. written on it to me. Yeah, let's go, J.D. God. So, I, mean, I thought Shaq was like, okay, so his dad's not telling me the truth. And his dad told me he averaged like 45 or well, something Well, that's like that. California. Everything's more expensive in California, oh, so good, it raises the point. rate from 34 to I thought, I thought to he 45. was like at 40-something. Maybe I'll have to clarify with Grew that. seven inches his junior year of high school. This was not Adam Cottrell. Charles Bediaco, maybe? Let's go. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Barnes. I wouldn't have gone that route either. That. I didn't <laughs> either. Pretty good. I was trying to think of a player who's tall enough to go seven inches in high school. Yeah. This player's been to Italy. Not well, Sabaro, but Italy. Chiku, France is close to Italy, is it not? Oh, uh, JQ. Oh, he must have been on some basketball deal in Italy. I didn't even know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Seven, seven brothers. brothers. Wow. What? Who am I missing? Wow. Why, why am I not thinking of uh, I gotta I, I should know I'm this. I'm laying out of this one. I, uh, oh, Ro, Ro, uh, James Rojas. He's got, yeah, yeah, because he's got, yeah, he definitely has. Okay. Oh, no, yes, I knew that. Okay. Hates bananas. Hates bananas. There's probably a lot of them because it's healthy. It's healthy food, so they probably hate it. Uh, let's go. Who's the pickiest eater we got? Uh, J.D. Davidson, maybe? He's a picky eater. Shaq again. Wow. Shaq actually eats somewhat healthy, though. Be Jeezy. Yeah, we, we turn to you for the rap questions. Who, His rap name what? would be B. So who, whose name Betty starts Ako, with a B? Betty Ako, maybe. Betty Ako, uh, maybe. Or Brandon. Let's go. With, let's, let's go. go with, Betty Ako or Barnes. Betty, Tyler Barnes. Let's go with Tyler. Freddie. <laughs> yeah, BJ. BJ. <laughs> BJ. BJ. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I should have known. Bad. Yeah. You think rap? You think Mountain Brook? Yeah, okay. Definitely. We're done. I was. That was bad. I, I failed that test uh, miserably. We That's tried it. to throw Betty Ako in there several times. I need to get to know times. the other side of the players a little more. You know. Yeah. Well, there's, there's off season. Charles well, had none of them. It, Charles is coming up next. I had though. one too. They're talking about where people travel. Namari went to like China on some USA three on three deal. I, I had I had an answer for that ready, but yeah. it didn't, didn't come up. One him. Betty Ako's coming up though next here on the Nate Oates Show. so much and shows a lot of emotion. I probably said my brother, you know, me and him, we're pretty competitive, so you know, we talk every day. When we get older, like, I'm gonna beat you in a one-on-one. -on -one. We're both very competitive athletes, so, you know, I feel like that just, that motivates me to get better. It's like a lot of pride, definitely a lot of pride, you know. Not a lot of Canadian ballers, you know, get the opportunity to get a scholarship and come down to the U.S. So, you know, me just being here, I feel like not only am I playing for the last time on my back, but I'm also playing for my country. Probably high school getting a game-winning dunk all the way in uh, Ohio. Like two seconds left, I had a transition dunk for the game. It was the best thing. Coach, I love the fact that this segment allows us to share some of the personality of these great kids you got on your roster. All right, Charles is great. He's, he's low-key super funny, too. I mean, he says yeah. some funny stuff. Most of it's quiet and under his breath, but he's, he's funny. I, I, I like having Charles around. I mean, he's playing well for us, too. I think he's third in the SEC in blacks. He was second there for a minute. I mean, he's got some big-time shot. Like Kessler is like top ten in the country, so it'd be hard to be in front of him. So for a freshman, he's playing well. He anchors our defense. You know, he's been pretty good. He's obviously gives us a rim protector, lob threat, guy that can finish at the rim. He played really well against Kentucky. Stuff above the rim, Coach. Do I make too much of the fact that he catches the ball below his waist as well as he does for a seven-footer? No, he's got really good hands. I mean, he's. Uh, I think when he gets a little stronger and puts some more weight on, you'll really see it as well too. Because you know, sometimes now he gets bumped off and it's harder to catch him when you get bumped a lot. But he's. 
He, he wants to work. I mean, he's one of the harder working guys we've got on the team. So he's, you know, and I don't know if most of he's from Canada, but he's got dual citizenship actually. His, his father's uh, from Chicago, so he's uh, from Canada, but some of the stuff's a little easier for him here in the U.S. because yeah. he's got dual citizenship. So he's a, he's a great kid. Happy he, to have him in the program. Tremendous upside. For him, only no, gonna get really, better. No, really, really good upside. I mean, most people don't know because we. I mean, he's not going to do it this year much, but he can actually shoot the ball a little bit. Like right. next year, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to see him shooting some threes and stuff for seven footer. So he, he he works hard on his game. He's making free throws at a high clip. I mean, I think he's our fourth best free throw shooter in SEC play too, on the team. So which is great for a seven footer and gets fouled a decent amount too. Yeah, seventy five percent range right now, from the free throw line. More coming up here on the Nate Oates Show. Another big week, Coach, they all are. I know that we had the stretch with three straight games against top five teams, but it's not like it gets easy all of a sudden, especially when you look at Arkansas and Mississippi State coming up. No, not easy at all. Arkansas is playing as good as any team in our league. They've won nine straight. They just popped Auburn. They're a good team. You know, J.D. Notes putting up really big numbers, so we're going to have to play well. They, you know, he's done a good job with the transfers. He's got a really good roster. You know, they're Center Jalen Williams is taking 34 charges on the year. He's playing really well for him. So we're gonna have to play well. You know, if we could combine our defense against Kentucky and our shooting against Ole Miss, I think we'd be good. But you know, I don't know that we're gonna be able to shoot. We can't rely on making that many threes every game. So our defense is gonna have to improve. We're gonna have to do a great job. When they start getting momentum going, they're really tough to slow down. No, they are. I mean, they've got multiple playmakers. You know, no taste playing well. We've got likes. I, you know, I haven't got into a ton of them yet because we're just we had a late game last night. Got back late, but we're uh, you know we've seen enough of them. I've watched them sure. play enough against other teams to know what they've got, and they're a good team. They, I know they've won nine straight games. You won't have to look at a ton of film for Mississippi State. Just go back to about two weeks ago, refresher course, if you will, against the Bulldogs. Yeah, we you know we played them pretty well without shooting it well at all. We just I mean, we rebounded with them for. 32 minutes, we just really lost it on the offensive boards in the last eight minutes of the game. So we got to get some guys. We got, you know, Rojas gave us good minutes. That was his first game back. You know, he's a little more comfortable now than he was there. I think some other guys are playing better. You know, Jason's playing better. We can play him more minutes if we need some size to help us with rebounding. And I thought, uh, you know, they, they've got good bigs. They play inside out a lot more. You know, they're, they're going to be a tough team. They beat us once already. They'll have our guys' attention for sure. So. You know, we get a two-game homestand. If we can get both these games at home, we'll be in great shape. Always appreciate the time. Look forward to seeing you next week and look forward to seeing you right here on the Nate Oak Show.